Hello everyone, my name is Juan Jose Gutierrez and I'm uh, recording for the third module of the third unit of our course. The unit is dedicated to explore the issue of terror in cyberspace. And I must uh, share with you in all candidness and honestly this is certainly not a topic that uh, I am in any way, shape or fashion a, an expert on. And, uh, but it's one that, very much so like you, uh, it's one that I'm really interested in exploring and better understanding. Basically because it is, it, it is something that is affecting me in direct and indirect ways. Uh, fortunately more in indirect ways than direct ways. But it affects me personally because I, I can see and I can feel how this affects the lives of um, countless people all over the world. And uh, one that I would like to be better uh, trained, better aware of in terms of its uh, nuances, its uh, repercussions, and just in terms of how it works. Um, I've, um, I was hesitating at the beginning of this semester as to whether or not um, include uh, a book that I read for this session that is called Terrorism in Cyberspace by Gabriel Wayman and um, but because of the load that we currently have I think it is uh, more like I would like to see this book as as an alternative reading for you uh, you will find a um, complete reference of the book posted on um, on the um, discovery section of, of uh, this module 3 um, he um, in this book he proposes something that um, as I'm writing in the introduction, something that we all know, we probably didn't have to read the entire book to be able to say this or to agree with him that uh, the so-called war on terrorism hasn't been won. I don't know if you remember, but the, the, um, the concept of a war on terrorism is something that emerged back in 2001 as a result of the attack of uh, Assel of uh, Al-Qaeda against uh, many countless and thousands of people um, in uh, New York and other parts of the US and that resulted in, in the loss of life of those many people. And uh, the reaction of the, um, of the US government was as expected, uh, forceful, determined, and uh, this was phrased uh, by the then President of the United States, George Bush, as a war on terrorism. This is what happens with uh, what makes the concept of war problematic. And again, I'm not a sociologist or a political um, um, uh, narrator, uh, political scientist, but um, the concept of war has been traditionally used to refer to the relationships between antagonistic relationships between two nations. So it implies institutions. So when you're fighting um, a terrorist group like like, like Al Qaeda, you're uh, you're fighting something that is not uh, equivalent to a state. Not even the so-called Islamic State is a state proper. Um, hence the um, the uh, all the diff legal and otherwise difficulties to articulate this this um, battle or this um, opposition, radical uh, armed and, and concerted opposition and determination to end with uh, terrorist groups such as Al-Qaeda. Um, when do you begin the war? Uh, who's declaring the war on the other side? Uh, what are the rules of engagement? Uh, when will this war end? Uh, is this total annihilation? Is this um, specific objectives? It's very difficult. And then here's the other thing. You're fighting against a um, uh, an organization that is not such in terms of institutions and that can just go dormant. Uh, so it has all kinds of, of problems. Think of Guantanamo Bay and the prison of Guantanamo, uh, more specifically, more than Guantanamo Bay. Um, are they soldiers? Do you have to uh, adhere to the signed conventions of, um, of fair treatment to uh, prisons of war? Uh, that was signed as a result of, um, of issues that emerged in the Second World War. I never know that. So it's complicated. 
And of course, this is something that is going to continue going and going. The second uh, difficult concept to grasp is um, if we're if we're to be asked, well, what is a terrorist uh, event? You're going to think of a blast. You're going to think of uh, kidnapping. You're going to think of a number of of events that are usually violent events that are that are meant to generate. It's uh, that's a typical definition of terrorism. To, to have a political gain as a result of that uh, violence exerted on others. Um, how, do you, how does that happen on the internet? What would you consider to be a terrorist event on the internet? So let's explore um, all aspects of this, what we're calling terror in cyberspace. And we're referring basically to uh, organizing support for those groups that are actually uh, in, engaged in, in violent attacks to specific individuals and groups or societies for political gain. Um, so I guess all I'm doing right now is just inviting you to reflect and, uh, and um, explore certain uh, bits of information that we have out there. The challenge for you and for me is to try to come to this not from a journalistic perspective or from a sociological or political perspective, but from an anthropological perspective. And to do so, I'm going to invite you to go back to some of those seminal ideas that we have been exploring during the semester, as so as to the reality of the digital realm, so as to the extent to, what, uh, to which the digital realm affects and changes our behavior, or the extent to which the digital realm simply plays out what we normally do in our everyday life. In other words, that we're, we're morphing those uh, tools so that we can use that as part of our extended uh, offline and online uh, uh, life. Uh, and um, in that way, we, we're going to be able to bring that anthropological perspective in, in exploring this specific issue of terror in cyberspace. Uh, what are the tools that are used in cyberspace? How is cyberspace being used um, by terrorist groups to exert violence and, and so forth? So uh, let's explore that. Um, in um, and going back to the book uh, by Wayman, he is explaining in this, um, in this work, and I think it's actually quite worth reading, that terrorist structures um, traditionally consist on loose cells, divisions, and subgroups, not a, a concrete um, localized geographically institution or nation. And those groups and loosely loosely connected cells of people are ideal for the um, for actions that are of, of co covered uh, nature that can be used the internet in um, in a very deceiving and and, um, and obscure obscure ways so that um, they they are undetected and so sort of difficult to chase and, and detain, and I uh, can some of the things that we're going to be exploring is how different nation states have organized specific specialized groups to try to counter the use of the internet for terrorist motives. For example, for recruitment, and I was thinking about the um, the. Um, Conversations that I've had with some some students about um, the the use of the deep web and certain certain abilities of the internet, so you can be um, pretty much all invisible, right? We are going to be exploring three specific questions in this module, and this is going to organize our work. We're going to be exploring why and how terrorism move from being a, an, uh, an action that happened in the real world into using or, or living online. Secondly, we are going to be also exploring recent trends in the use of uh, digital realm and its tools uh, for terrorist uh, purposes. And thirdly, 
I would like for us to explore from, uh, this is more of an anthropological question, we're going to explore online websites and uses of the digital by terrorist groups as a reflection of their offline organization, which, as you may suspect, goes along with some of the theses that we have explored in uh, the past two units. All right. Um, in terms of uh, what we have, what I have in store for you is uh, please be reminded to read your learning objectives so that you know what is it that we're trying to attain in terms of uh, learning outcomes. Secondly, uh, I'm going to be presenting you with a short lecture based on some of the notes that I've taken on on issues related to the digital and terrorism. On the discovery section, I will give you access to some information on this book by, by Gabriel uh, Wayman, uh, Terrorism in Cyberspace. But I will be posting, as I normally do, um, a few clips and materials that I have found here and there that will help us um, so create a, a collective understanding of certain definitions and issues so that we can engage in a conversation in the problem solving section of, of this module. And uh, if you have done so, um, let's go back to the module feedback uh, section and give you some feedback. Uh, again, I remain apologetic for some of the hiccups that we've had uh, this semester with uh, screens and whatnot, but I want also to encourage you to remain connected and to remain um, performing at, at your best as we move along. Uh, regarding the, um, the readings for this week, um, just keep on working on those annotations and um, and I think that's it for this module. So I hope you enjoy uh, the readings and the exploration as much as I have and, or probably even more. 